Okay. Uh, I'm going to get Go Guardian started really quick so that I can make sure that you guys are paying attention. It's a great uh, little tool. So fun. We've had it all year. I just didn't tell you guys about it until recently. Plus, they didn't tell us how to use it until recently, so there's that too. But we've had it all year. Really? Yeah. There we go. I'll turn the chat on in case you guys need anything. Okay. So, um, like I was saying before, um, number one, grades are completely updated in um, Power School. If there is anything from the first week of the third quarter, so that would be the distance test, um, thing, any sort of stuff from the first week of this quarter, it's now close you can't go back and do them if you have a zero on those assignments it stays a zero because you have one week to make it up and if it doesn't get made up it stays a zero and i'm not going to go back on that like it's going to be a pretty strict policy from here on out if you don't make it up it stays a zero that's going to affect your grades but the reason i'm doing that is because in junior high they have such strict policies that are very similar to that that if you don't do your work on time they give you a little bit, sometimes it's even just a few days to make up your work. And if it's not done, it will stay a zero. So we're going to stick to that for the rest of the year. And uh, yeah, anything from last week. So that would be things like the missing vertex assignments, pet therapy, camel, and then the diagram of the solar system. That stuff is stuff that you can still make up for one week. And then anything from this week, you guys got to make sure that you do as we're doing it. Um, so grades are updated. Anything from that first week of the quarter stays a zero if it is a zero. Now, for um, ELA this week, we've been doing a lot of reading assignments where we read a story, answer questions, and that's a lot of reading things. We're going to kind of move on to the writing part of ELA because ELA stands for English Language Arts. It means reading and writing. So for this whole week, we're going to kind of talk about how to write an argumentative essay, which is like how to argue your own points. So you're going to make an opinion on something and argue your point on it with a little bit of research behind it. So we're going to talk about how that's done. Um, and then next week, we'll start actually writing the essay. So we have four days of learning how to write it. We're going to talk about the specific parts of this essay, and then you guys will write one next week. Okay. So. Let's go ahead and go over to Google Classroom where we have that assignment. We haven't even started going over it, so give it a, a day to see if it still sounds complicated. Okay. All right, so our new assignment is under ELA. It's called Argu Argumentative Essay Slides. It's on Savage, just like it has been before. So go ahead and get that opened up. Okay, so we're getting argumentative essay slides opened up. The polar bear? Um, probably. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a minute to go ahead and get this pulled up. I'm just going to check attendance really quick. All right, so go ahead and be opening up these slides and just be on slide number one. Um, and then we're going to talk about how we're going to do this during the week, okay? Looks like most of you guys are there already, so I think we're good. All right, so on these argumentative slides, if you look down in the bottom right corner, it says 1 through 16, 1 of 16. So there are 16 slides on this PowerPoint. Um, in different sections, there's places to do like little activities to make sure you're understanding. We're going to do this in sections. So today we're going to do slides 1 through 6. 
tomorrow we're going to do more slides that I don't remember. I don't know how many we're doing each day. It changes. But um, we've kind of split it up based on parts of the essay. So we're going to start with slides one through six today. There's a couple of activities in here to do, some matching, some vocabulary stuff. Um, we're going to do a lot of this together, but parts of this will be graded, especially the parts where you have to match things or answer questions. You got to make sure that you're doing those parts because that's the graded part. Okay. So first, we're going to start with slide number one. What is an argumentative essay? Okay. Um, it says many scientists, conservationists, and other other concerned people claim that climate change caused by humans is damaging the habitats of animals such as polar bears, sea turtles, and red wolves. Others claim that climate change is normal in nature. Each side uses arguments to defend its claim. So if we look at climate change, there are people that are like, climate change is a thing, it's affecting our environment. And then there's people on the other side of the spectrum that are like, nah, it's not a thing. It's not hurting the environment. So most people will fall on one side of that argument. And we could, I don't know if that's what our essay is about, I don't remember, but we could write an essay based on how we feel about that argument, okay? And it says, have you ever gotten frustrated trying to get someone to see something your way? Yeah. Because it is not always easy, you must know how to craft an effective argument. Um, people have opinions about things, and, all, and arguing with someone, you gotta make sure you have an argument that makes sense. You can't just go into an argument or a conversation with someone and not have evidence to back up what you're saying. You can't just go into an argument and be like, climate change is real. I'm right. <laughs> you just can't do that. You gotta have evidence to back up why you think that climate change is real. Huh? <laughs> True. Yoshi? Kind of like you're in court, yeah. Like you have to back up why you think you're innocent, yeah. Um, that would that's where so you would need an effective argument. If you don't have an effective well, argument, well, it's not going to go well, right? So our bullet points here say an effective argument contains a precise claim or a position. So the claim is what you think is true, and then that is supported by logical reasoning and relevant evidence. Okay. An argument should be organized in a way that makes sense, and the style and tone of the argument should be appropriate for the purpose and audience. An argument should also address possible counterclaims. All of these bolded words, we're going to talk about what they mean and how they come to, um, together in your essay, okay? So here's some types of arguments. First, we have advertisements. Um, an ad on TV or on a bulletin board might say one thing. Does that mean that you think that it's true? No. No, so you could argue about it, right? An argumentative essay, which is what we're gonna write, will have arguments in it, right? Calls to action are things like, you need to go do this because this, this, and this. You might not think that that's true. Critical reviews are people's opinions on something. Um, remember that monkey essay that we read about the artist claiming that that monkey had the most spectacular yeah, paintings. Was that was kind of an opinion, right? Did you guys think that the monkey had the best drawings ever? That's true. I haven't really seen a lot of monkeys draw either. But you never know if it, uh, that was his opinion, right? Um, our next one, letters to the editor. Have you guys ever seen a letter to an editor? No. So that's like, let's say someone writes an article and I disagree with it. I don't think it's true. So then I would write a letter to the editor that's like, this isn't true because this, this, and this. So I would argue my side of things based on what they already wrote. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, Op-ed pieces. I actually don't know what that is. Mr. Turner, do you know what that one is? I don't know either. So we're just going to skip that one. Let's just assume that you argue in it. Um, the next one, persuasive essays. What does it mean to persuade someone? To make them do something. A persuasive essay is you saying you should help fix climate change because this, this, and this, right? Uh, persuasive speeches just mean that you're speaking that out loud instead of writing it down. 
And then you have propaganda. Propaganda is like saying, claiming things without giving evidence. What is it? Okay. Okay. The, so that op ed piece kind of sounds like it's um, almost like a letter to the editor, but the editor is writing it with their opinion, kind of. Yeah. yeah? Okay. But essentially, they're arguing their side, right? So all of these things, all these bullet points are different ways to argue effectively. Elijah, what's up? Similar, yes, very much so, yeah. Um, you're stating your side of an argument, giving reasons why your side is correct, but then you also give the counterclaim of why the opposite side might be right as well, right? So it's very similar to a persuasive essay, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of an overview of what an argumentative essay is, and just in general, what types of argumentative writing there are. So let's go ahead and click at the bottom to slide number two. Okay. This is where we have some vocabulary that we're going to talk about. Um, these are all things that you will see in your essay. And as we are writing your essay and going through these slides, you're going to see these words all the time. So our first one, you can click on it and it will open up, says argument. And it gives us a definition and an example. So an argument is a type of writing in which an author attempts to prove that his or her position or stance on a topic is better than other points of view on the topic. So your idea is better than anyone else's and I'm going to prove it. Okay. So an example would be Al Gore's acceptance speech for the Nobel Peace Prize as he tries to convince people that the threat of climate change is serious. So he gave a speech that he was basically like, yo, guys, climate change is a thing. It's a thing. And then he gave his reasons and all that stuff in a speech. Okay. So that's our argument. And we have claim. Okay. Could someone read claim for me? Okay, go ahead, Elijah. Nice and loud. Okay. So it's his or her position. What they think is the right side of the argument. Just because I claim something, does that mean that you guys are going to agree with me? No. No. We could have different claims. I could claim that climate change is correct, not correct, sorry, real. And someone else could claim, no, climate, oh my gosh, I can't talk this morning. No, climate change is not real. So we have different claims. We just need the evidence to back it up. Okay. So our example here is the excerpt from Al Gore's speech is a claim. So this is his position. It says, we, the human species, are confronting a planetary emergency, a threat to the survival of our civilization that is gathering ominous and destructive potential even as we gather here. So basically climate change is happening whether or not we uh, say it is or not, okay? Our next one is reasons. Can I have someone else read the reasons for me? Anyone? Online or in person? Okay, that one's nice and loud. Good. So the reasons are your explanations as to why you state your claim. So you would claim climate change is real, and your reasons would be this, this, and this, right? Um, we've talked about making sure that you have examples and reasons in your writing before. All right. Our next one, evidence. Anybody want to read that one? 
online or in person. Yes, no, maybe so. All right, I'll read it. Evidence is used to support an argument. Evidence would include facts, statistics, anecdotes, examples, quotations from experts or authorities, and quotations from text. So this is where you find the research and you cite your sources and give examples with people with, with other things that have backed up this uh, claim. So it's not just like your opinion with what you think, it's sources and facts from people that are scientists or experts on the situation, things like that, right, Elijah? Um, your reason is what you think, the evidence supports your reason. So you could say climate change is real because the ice caps are melting. And then you would find evidence that's like articles or experts saying the ice caps are melting because this isn't this. Mm -hmm. Yep. So our example here is that one, uh, one example of evidence in Al Gore's speech is that a study by the U.S. Navy researchers state that the North Polar ice caps could be completely gone in just a few years. I didn't read that before I gave my example, and that was a good example. Kind of fit right there with it. Okay. Counterclaim. Our next one. Anybody want to read the counterclaim? I'll do it. Oh, Juliana, go ahead. Nice and loud. It's Contradicts. Good. What is it? Yeah. Good. So, first of all, what does the word contradict even mean? Because that's a big word. What does it mean? To contradict something. So, like, kind of. You guys are all kind of on the right track. So, your claim is what you think, right? Yeah. A counterclaim is the opposite side of what people think. Um, so contradicts means that you give the opposite opinion. So if you say, yes, climate change is real, the opposite side of that, the counterclaim is climate change is not real. So it's just the opposite of whatever you think. So in this case, Al Gore was talking about climate change and how it's real and it's affecting the world and all that stuff. And then the counterclaim that contradicts his idea is that climate change is natural, doesn't have to do with humans polluting the earth, it just happens. Yeah. His speech was about um, climate change and how it's affecting you. His is an argumentative um, speech because he's giving his idea or his claim, providing evidence and reasons, and he also had a counterclaim in it, so that makes it an argumentative speech. Okay. And then our last one here is call to action. Anybody want to read it? Okay, go ahead. Nice and loud. Good. So call to action is basically like, hey, Go fix climate change. Like it's calling you to go do something to help the environment or change whatever is happening. Because um, every speech is not going to be about climate change. So it's a call to action to help whatever your speech was about or your essay. So in Al Gore's speech, the main call to action of Gore's speech is a strong statement at the end. He said, we will have everything we need to get started save perhaps the political will, but political will is a renewable resource. So let us renew it and say together, we have a purpose, we are many, and for this purpose, we will rise and we will act. That didn't really, huh? Okay. No, he's saying like, people may not have the desire to help and change things, but a lot of us do, so we should all act and try to change climate change. Yeah. So there's a lot of our um, 
what's it called, vocabulary that we're going to see throughout this. If at any point you, we are talking about what evidence is and you forget, just go back to this slide. Read through the uh, definition again, and it'll help you. This slide doesn't go anywhere. It's still there. Just click back to number two, and you'll have the vocabulary there for you. Okay? Look at slide number three. Number three is one that you would potentially be graded on because you are going to be matching here. So I am going to give you guys a few minutes. Let me explain it really quick. It says drag each term from the left to match it with the sentence on the right that best describes that vocabulary word. Click the check answers button to check your answers. So this is a self-checking thing. Let's just do number one together. Let's do... You can't change the placement of it? Mm. So let's read through this stuff because this is about a soccer field, it seems. It says, well, no, hang on, let's, let's, oh. I know. Yeah. So let's, um, we're going to read through each sentence really quick, just so that you have an idea, and then you guys are going to do the matching. So it says, our town should place lights near the soccer field so teams can play at night. So that could be the argumentative writing, it could be the reason, the claim, the evidence, or the counterclaim. Then we have the soccer field would get more use because the lights would allow night games. So that could be one of the things. Then we have some people think it's not worth the expense. So it could be expensive to light those fields. The next one is an essay that argues, an essay argues that lights on the field would add to the quality of life in the community. And then the last one, according to a poll, more than one third of the citizens approve the cost of adding lights to the soccer field. So you guys need to place the correct things there. I'm going to give you a couple minutes. Um, just do your best. You can check your answers. So go ahead and be working on this slide, please. And thank you. It's not, it's not letting me go to this way. To slide number three? Yeah. I don't know why that would be. Maybe just keep... It wasn't working for him. Um, Dallin said it wasn't working for him, but he refreshed it and it worked for him. Okay, I'll try that. Okay. I'm trying to see what the other slide was and it just kept rolling. Hmm. Yeah, it worked. Okay, good. Hmm. Okay. We'll give it about two more minutes to be working on this one. Oh my god, I'm all right. Bravo. All right, let's go ahead and look at these. So again, we can just drag and drop wherever they need to go. So, no, let's go one at a time. So where would argumentative essay go? Where does this match up? The fourth one, you guys say the fourth one? So that's one, two, three, four. An essay argues that lights on the field would add to the quality of life in the community. So it's saying this is what we're going to write about. Does that show us that this is going to be an argumentative writing piece? Yeah, yeah. I believe so too. So we would put that one there. Good. Reason. What's the reason that lights would add quality of life, Juliana? Number two, the soccer field would get more use because lights would allow night games. So that's a reason why we should add lights. Okay. What about the claim? What are they claiming will help here? The first one, number one, mm -hmm. our town should place lights near the soccer field so teams can play at night. Mm -hmm. So they're claiming that they should put nights in, and not nights, 
put lights in. And their reason is that it would allow people to play soccer at night. What's the evidence that would support our reasoning? Yeah. The last one, the evidence is a poll, which is scientific evidence, right? They did a poll that said that people in the community approve of adding lights, which is good. What's the counterclaim? What's the opposite of adding lights? The last one, obviously, that some people think that it's not worth the money to put that in. Okay, so we have these all in an order. Huh. Yeah, that's what we put. Yeah, so they think that spending money on the electricity wouldn't be worth putting lights there. Uh, so it says that one third of the people in the city approve of adding lights. So that's only 33%, right? Um, which isn't a whole ton, but if 33% of the people want those lights there, it might be enough to convince the city to do it. And then the people that are like going to the town council meeting to be like, no, we shouldn't put lights there are probably going to go and argue. It's not worth the money if only 33% of people are going to go use it, right? Okay, so yeah, then we check our answers. Oh my gosh, we got five out of five. <laughs> That's true. It could end up that nobody uses the field. Who knows? So we have, um, we did pretty good on that. So if we were to go in order, right, the first thing that we would write in our essay would be this argumentative writing right here. An essay that's going to argue that lights on the field would add quality of life to the community. Okay. Then we would go directly into the claim. The claim would be the next thing where you say, this is my opinion. Lights should be placed there. Then you give your reason to why you think the lights should be placed there. So it would bring more people there at night. After the reason, you state your evidence of why it should be there. So one third of people want it. And then the last thing that you write about is the counterclaim, the opposite side of it to show, okay, yeah, but there is the other side. So mine's still correct. Don't worry. Okay. That's kind of how it goes. That's the order that we're going to go in when we actually write these. All right. Let's look at slide number four. Okay. Slide number four, we're going to be talking about the claims of just how to write a claim. Okay. So go ahead and go to slide number four. Um, I don't know what's on this one. I think I said it before we started. I was very unprepared for this lesson, and we were just going to kind of wing it and go with what is on the slide. <laughs> like, I know how to write an argument in a essay. That's not the issue. It's just that I didn't know what was in the slides because I did not have time to look them over. But, you know, I'd say we're doing pretty good. Yeah. So this slide talks about what an effective claim is. What does effective even mean? Effective versus ineffective. Something that affects uh, something else. So that effective that you're talking about, Charlie, starts with an A. So A effective, this one is E effective. There's a difference between the two. It works. Yeah, so E effective means that this is a good claim. It works. It is a good thing, right? Ineffective means it's not good. doesn't work. Okay, so an effective claim will clearly present the author's position or the stance on a topic. So this means that the reader is going to have no trouble determining what the author is arguing for or against. A claim usually appears in the introduction, so the first paragraph of your argument, and is restated and addressed in the conclusion, which is your last paragraph. Okay, so these are a couple of claims. Thank you. Um, the first one says, creating a bike path through the woods will interfere with the animals and plants in the area. Is this clear about what they're arguing for? What do they want? So, okay, let's read that again. Creating a bike path through the woods will interfere with the animals and plants in the area. Do they think there should be a bike path? No. no. 
that's true. So you would be on the opposite side of the argument of this person, right? Okay, so yeah. So that one would be on the opposite side of this argument. So this person is saying, no, we should not have a bike path because it's going to mess up with the animals and the plants. And then if they were to do our counterclaim, it would be where that one is coming from. Of like, no, it would be cool to have that because you could ride through and see all the plants and animals. Yes. That's true. So in that case, I think you would be on the side of no bike path because it could create trash and stuff in the woods, right? So they could pick up trash while they're building it? I'm confused. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Our next claim on the right over here, on this one, says, as your class president, which is the person like that you elect to represent your sixth grade people, right? As your class president, I will have more school meetings and encourage better student-teacher communication. So they are claiming, I'm going to have more meetings because meetings are so fun. And they're going to encourage better student-teacher communication. So basically, like, our ability to talk to each other about grades or life or whatever, right? So that's a good claim because they can support their evidence or support their reasons and their claim, okay? So those are just a couple examples. Let's go ahead and look at slide number five, okay? Of how to write an effective claim. Okay, so go ahead and go to slide number five. Okay. Slide number five. You can see most of you guys on there. Good, good. Not the right slide. There we go. Okay, so we're going to talk about how to write a good claim. Write one that works and says your opinion in it. So this slide says, when you write your claim, you need to make sure that it's an effective one. An effective claim is clear and specific and should not sound like an emotional or a personal opinion. So when you're writing argumentative essays, most of the time you're trying to keep your emotions out of it. You don't want to get too emotional in an argumentative essay because then people aren't gonna take it as seriously, I feel. Okay, which is kind of sucks because you can be emotional about a topic and you can feel very strongly about a topic, but if you're presenting it from a side of your thoughts and feelings, people are going to take it as more of an opinion versus the science behind why you feel that way. Okay, that's a big thing about climate change. People will go and give their opinion, but not have the facts to back up why they feel like climate change is happening which it totally is. So, an example of an ineffective claim. What does ineffective mean again? Um, not, not, not good. Does not work. Okay. This one says video games are a ridiculous waste of time and should never be allowed. Why is that not a good one? Because we could waste our lives on games. Yes, but why is it not a good claim? What a, there's emotion in it. What tells you that it's emotional? Basically the way it's written, right? When you say it's a ridiculous waste of time, can't you see like an 80 year old woman being like, it's a ridiculous waste of time, shouldn't be allowed, and she's just really emotional about it. <laughs> see, that's what I thought of too, okay? So, there's no evidence in it, that's true. Um, the explanation underneath says that you can see that the claim above is general and unclear. The informal phrase, ridiculous waste of time, makes it sound like an opinion of someone that's uninformed with only emotional reasoning as opposed to a solid argument, okay? Then underneath it, we have a more effective way to state that claim. It says video games should be played only when schoolwork for the day has been completed. This rewritten claim uses formal language, so it's more um, formal when you listen to it. It's not like, eh, yeah, yeah. 
gives you more of like a solid idea behind it. And it narrows down the argument so that it's not harsh and it's not a ridiculous waste of time, right? Doesn't sound like you're what? Yeah, it doesn't sound like you're angry about the fact that video games are a waste of time, right? I'm not, I'm not saying this. This is just an example. Okay. So the bottom, uh, bottom part here says read the following steps so that you can develop your own effective claim. So the first thing that you would do is choose a topic that you are passionate about. What does passionate mean? Not necessarily. Yeah, it's not necessarily confidence. It's more like you feel very strongly about something. And you can be passionate in a positive way or a negative way. So you can be very passionate about the fact that climate change is real and it's totally happening and we need to fix it. And then, so that's more of a positive angle. There is the negative way of being passionate about something. I can think of a lot of examples, but I don't want to say them, so I'm not going to. <laughs> um, writing a claim is easier if you care about the topic and you have a strong opinion on the issues connected to the topic. So writing about something that you don't really care about is not very much fun, right? I'm sure that you guys have written essays before that you're like, wow, I really don't care about this. I don't want to write it. Yeah, can you think of a time when you had to do that? Yeah, I can think of a time when I've had to do that, right? I'm pretty sure I've probably made you do that this year already, too. So my hope, I don't remember what our essay about next is about next week, but I'm pretty sure it's something that you guys can connect to a little bit more and have a strong opinion on. Um, and then it says, then determine the issue on which you will focus your arguments. For example, recycling. An issue related to the benefits of recycling will be the basis of your claim. Okay? So... Having um, strong feelings about whatever you're arguing about is going to be easier to write about because you'll be able to come up with your reasons why you feel that way about it, right? Yes. Um, reload the page. It should hopefully work. Okay. The next one says to narrow or refine your claim. This one means to narrow it down. Narrowing or refining your claim is necessary. Avoid making a broad claim on a topic with very complex aspects. Instead, narrow the topic to one or two aspects that you can define thoroughly. For example, if you want to make an argument about recycling and how that helps conserve, conserve natural resources, you might want to focus on just one resource instead of several. So instead of just saying recycling is good, give a more specific idea of why recycling is good so that you can make more specific claims, okay? So you don't wanna to have too broad of a topic. Our next part, arguable claims. Can someone read that one for me? I'm tired of reading. Who wants to read that one out loud? What's an arguable claim? Okay, Charlie, read that one loud, please. Ask yourself this question. Someone could argue against my claim. A claim should be debatable. For example, all children should be able to see a doctor when they are sick. No one would disagree with that. There are, however, many opinions on the best way to make sure that seeing a doctor can be made possible for all children. An appropriate claim would be to take a side on what you believe this is a way to achieve this goal. Good. Awesome. So when you make a claim about something, you want to make sure that people can argue about it, not just food is awesome. Because how many people are going to argue with you that food is good? How about, how about OK, so see, that's a really good arguable claim. So me as a vegetarian could say, nobody should eat meat because it's better for the environment, it's better for your health, better for the animals. Right there, I feel very passionate about that. I can argue that. But can you guys think of an opposite argument to what I just said? Meat makes you buff. Meat makes you buff, yeah. <laughs> okay. But you can think of an opposite side of that argument. So arguing about whether people should eat meat or not is an arguable claim. There's two clear sides. No, people should not eat meat. Yes, people should eat meat. So you want to make sure you choose an argument that has two sides. You don't want to choose something that's like, 
everybody's going to agree with you because the right so you want to make sure it's an arguable thing yeah if you're in between the argument i would choose a different one so that you can choose that choose a side uh, if you feel if you don't feel strongly either way then it's probably not something that you should write about because you can't fully support one side versus the other one does that make sense good all right and then finally Sufficient evidence means that there's enough evidence to support your claim. So with the meat versus no meat example, I could, I easily came up with three things really quick that support my side of the argument, right? You shouldn't eat meat because it's better for your health, it's better for the animals, and it's better for the environment. Three things right there that I feel strongly about. But there's other things too. I, I can go on and on about not eating meat, but I'm not going to. So. You just wanna make sure that there's enough evidence to support your argument, whether it's for or against something, okay? So there's some stuff about claims. And then the last thing we're gonna to do today is slide number six, where there, this is a um, five questions, multiple choice. I'm gonna give you guys a few minutes to work on it. Basically, choose the best answer for the question. And it's basically choosing the most effective, so the ones that's a good claim versus the least effective a bad claim okay so take a couple minutes work on those ones you can do the check answer we'll review them in a few minutes so i'll be working on that for favor for favor Then put your jacket on. I don't have one. Oh, I don't. I don't have a way to fix that. I'm sorry. A couple more minutes on this one. Alex, go answer the question. Yoshi, answer the questions, please. Okay, slide number six for answering the questions. This is the last thing that we're doing today. And then we will be done with ELA for today. It's raining out there. Um, wait until we go over them. But yeah, it should save your work after that. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to go over them whether or not. It should save. I don't know why it wouldn't. Okay, we'll do about two minutes. Is that enough time? Two more minutes to finish up these five questions? Just those five questions on slide number six, yes. You can.
I don't think it'll uh, let you redo it anyway. So. What is sufficient evidence? Sufficient evidence means that you have enough evidence to support the claim. So you can support it with this, this, and this reason. Okay. Yep. All right, well, since those of you in class are talking a lot, I'm going to assume that we're pretty much done. So I'm going to go ahead and go over these. So we're going to look at number one. It says, which of the following statements is the most effective claim? What is an effective claim? Is that good or bad? Good. good claim. Good. This is a good claim. So the one that sounds the best. This one says, should students read the diary of Anne Frank? That's a question. Do we think that a question is a good claim? Good. You're kind of going in between. It's kind of wishy-washy. So probably not the question. Okay. Uh, B says, the diary of Anne Frank is the diary of a girl who is hiding from the Nazis during World War II. So that's telling you what the diary is about. Is it telling you a claim about the book? Not really, no. Um, this one says some students may enjoy reading the diary of Anne Frank. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of like an opinion, not really like a, yes, we should read it. And then number D, letter D, whatever, says the diary of Anne Frank should be required reading for all students. So we should all read it. I think that's a pretty good claim. It's saying we should all read it. And then after that, you would give your reasons about why you should read it or the opposite reasons why it should not be read if for the counterclaim. So I would say that D is the best one for that. Okay. Number two, which of the following is the least effective? So are we looking for the good claims or the bad ones? For least effective? Yeah, we're looking for a bad one, one that does not give us any information at all. Part or the letter A says Harry Potter books may or may not be the best novels of all time. Kind of wishy-washy on that. Part B says J.K. Rowling is one of the best writers ever. That's a pretty solid statement right there. Like she's the best. Can you support that with evidence? You can support that with with evidence, right? Um, C says Harry Potter books are so much fun for kids to read. Can you support that with evidence that they're fun to read? Probably, yep. And then letter D says Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is the greatest book ever written. Can you support that with evidence? No. Probably. Which one can you not support with evidence? Part A. Harry Potter may or may not be the best novels of all time. It's like very wishy-washy, first of all. It says both sides of the thing. If it said Harry Potter is the best series of all time, that would be a good claim because it says one side of the argument. But this does not give a side on either way, so that's not a good claim. The least effective. Number three, which of the following claims needs to be narrowed down for a short argumentative essay? What did you guys get? A, B, C, or D? Do you guys remember? No. A, B. I got, I got A. You got A? So which one needs to be narrowed down for a better argumentative essay? Charlie got A. I haven't read through them. What did you guys get? Any other ideas? I thought it said the least effective claim. Like the one that's not you. like the worst claim. That's what I no, thought this one, about. So this I one's asking which one is too broad. Which one should you narrow down for a better essay? So we have all students should teach, all schools should teach, wow, should teach students to play chess. Schools across the country are experiencing low graduation rates. Action must be taken. Our school needs funding in order to provide band uniforms. And if you spend a lot of time each day sitting at a desk, there are simple steps that you can take so that you have get enough exercise. I don't, this one is kind of a tough one, right? A couple of you guys are saying B, so we'll go with that. Okay. Number four, which one? Uh, which of the following statements is an arguable claim? Which one can you argue the best? 
Nutritious foods should be able to help people throughout the world as basic human necessity or should be available. Uh, many students show that the, wow, I cannot read today. Many studies show that the existence of the bald eagle has been threatened because of the use of pesticides. A species is considered endangered when too many members are lost or if the conditions in which they live make it difficult for them to survive. Or part D, smartphones make people smarter. B. B, why do you guys say D? A couple of you guys did, even in the chat. Because Okay, so, yeah, you can do both sides of that. You can say, yes, smartphones make people smarter. You can argue both sides. Yes, they make people smarter. No, they do not. I don't really know the answer to this one, which is why it's an argumentative essay, because you can go either way. You can argue both sides of that, right? Yeah. And then the last one, which of the following claims is most likely to have sufficient evidence? So enough evidence to be able to support your claim. So part A, many people have been abducted by alien beings from other planets. Do we have evidence to support that, really? No. Not really. I mean, people have, like, UFO sightings and stuff like that, but can we, like, for sure say that people have been abducted by aliens? No. Not really, no. Okay. Um, part B says, in the future, many of us will be living on Mars. Can we support that with evidence that humans can live on Mars? No. Not yet. So we can't say B has a good evidence. Part C says gene therapies are being developed as better treatment for the many genetic ailments. Older treatments should be phased out when uh, gene therapy is available. So that's all about um, your genetics and things like that, um, DNA. And do you think that we can support that with evidence? It's like a scientific theory there. What do you guys think? Probably. And then part D, he says, to cure a headache, lick a tiny piece of paper and stick it to your forehead for 15 minutes. Can we support that with sufficient evidence? No. I don't think so. I mean, you could try it and see if it works, but that's like the only thing you can do. It's not a very good claim. So what do we think our answer is here? A, B, C, or D? I C. C, I think you guys are correct. Let's check our answers. That one's correct, 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 correct. Boom. Killing it. If, uh, let's say you got one wrong, did you notice that it says why you might have gotten it wrong on the bottom? Yeah. Or why we got it correct? So this gives you feedback too. Automatically it tells you, yes, I got it correct. This is why you got it correct. Or no, you got it wrong. This is why it's wrong. Okay. Yeah, it says that. Good. Awesome. So this helps to, to give you like immediate feedback on how you did on this assignment. So tomorrow, I believe we are doing six or seven eight and nine we're going to do seven eight and nine tomorrow so you can hold off you don't need to do any more today um we will continue this tomorrow um i'm going to go ahead and stop our recording